Hello, my soul-seeking friends. It's Shanna. Thank you so much for listening to Sense of Soul podcast. Enlightening conversations with like-minded souls from around the world, sharing their journey of finding their light within, turning pain into purpose, and awakening to their true sense of soul. If you like what you hear, show me some love and rate, like, and subscribe. And consider becoming a Sense of Soul Patreon member, where you will get ad-free episodes, monthly circles, and much more. Now go grab your coffee, open your mind, heart, and soul. It's time to awaken. Today we have with us author Sandra Bellamy. She is a Blue Talk Amplify speaker and an asexuality coach. She sees herself as an ambassador for asexuality, which is an ongoing mission for her to get asexuality recognized throughout the globe. Sandra is joining us today to tell us about her new book, Asexual Perspectives. Sandra is so sweet and so passionate about this topic. And so I'm happy that I am able to be able to provide this space for Sandra today. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. I'm really excited for our interview. You're so passionate. I just love that you're using your voice. Good for you. You're talking about something that not a lot of people talk about. You're very inspiring. Oh, thank you so much. That means a lot to me. I love it. I got a message this morning from one of my YouTubers and she's like, oh, I always love your videos. And it's really nice when I hear that. Where are you joining us from? I am from the UK. So I live in a city called Exeter in Devon. I really like it here. It's a very vibrant city. I'm an extrovert, which is quite rare for an asexual person. Most asexuals are introverted. But I love being asexual and being in the city is really nice. So I go clubbing and stuff, which not a lot of people who are asexual do, because obviously there's a lot of heterosexuals, a lot of sexual energy there and stuff like that. But yeah, so I live in Exeter by myself. I'm single. I don't like sex because I'm asexual, which is a sexual orientation that's a lack of sexual attraction. I'm personally a sex repulsed asexual for me. I like being single. I do still look for a romantic ideally asexual male life partner but I haven't found him yet I don't want marriage though I don't want kids and I prefer to live on my own even in a relationship so I like a living apart together relationship which means you live in separate places near each other but not actually with each other therefore I feel that you can have your own space I find it very difficult to sleep in front of someone very difficult to sleep in the same bed partly because I get self-conscious Another part is because I have fibromyalgia, which is a chronic pain condition that affects the nerves and muscles of the body. So it's really difficult because I need personal space physically because if anyone's near my pressure points, even if they're not directly on it, I can kind of feel that. Mm. And also I prefer not to take my clothes off because I'm nudity repulsed, which is quite rare for asexuals as well. So I prefer to keep my clothes on even in a relationship and kiss with my clothes on. I love kissing though. I'm a hyper romantic and a hyper kisser, which is very different to most of the entire world population, let alone asexuals. Most asexuals only like a tiny bit of kissing and I do get really romantic so I'm excessively romantic so I self-date so I was a speaker at the UK asexuality conference in London in 2018 and I did a couple of talks one was about how to arrange an asexual meetup because I arranged them in my city and people come from different parts of the UK to it and I also spoke about self-love and self-dating being the most like the best part if you like of dating and relationships is make sure you self-date and love yourself and I I put some pictures on the screen of how I self-date like I go to theme parks and I go and take myself out to Nando's and I go to the cinema and so I do whatever I would do in a romantic relationship but with myself sometimes I kiss myself even I love kissing that much so yeah I do a YouTube show as you know which I talk about asexuality I share my daily life usually on YouTube on my asexualized my asexual life channel so it's a bit like a reality tv show and I've been doing that since 2015. It started mm. off more as like just individual videos. And then in 2018, as part of Asexual Perspectives Awareness Month, which I founded in 2017, actually, um, 2018, I decided to go live every single day instead of just posting your videos. So in celebration of my 
book, which is to celebrate our diversity across the asexual spectrum and our differences within it. So I did this book because I got so many people in my inbox asking me different questions like, what's it like to have a relationship with another asexual? What's it like to have a relationship with a sexual person? And all these questions are in this book and all the answers are in the book because I I was answering them all the time in private message and I thought why not put a book out there where everyone can get access to the answers to the questions that they ask all the time especially when they're new to asexuality so this shows asexual and it shows different asexual people all across the spectrum and instead of just giving textbook definitions of asexuality and asexuals it actually explores the lives of asexuals Wow. And so it gives different perspectives. I know that your listeners who are listening on podcast won't be able to see the book, but if they just type asexual perspectives into Amazon, for example, then they'll see it come up. It's like I got an orange and purple cover. And so, um, yeah, it pretty much answers every question they could possibly think of when they're new to asexuality, discover the asexual spectrum. And there's 47 different stories, including my own, told in questions and answers that strategically thought about in order to answer all the questions that people have got so it's really good because there's all different types from pure asexuals to gray asexuals in this book you are really probably talking to people who may be experiencing this and they don't quite exactly know what they're experiencing they didn't know it had a name you know i am against some of the labels like but unfortunately the way to get certain awareness is through labels i'm actually a big fan of labels I find that the only people that are uncomfortable with the labels of asexuals are the ones that are not comfortable with asexuality. So no one seems uncomfortable with labeling themselves heterosexual. You never hear of someone saying, well, why are you labeling yourself as a heterosexual? I'm I'm curious about that. But you can't really tell by looking at someone how they're feeling inside. So many people might just assume that you're heterosexual, which is not necessarily the case. And people are speaking up about that. But I have to know when you figured this out and how you did. Okay, so I didn't discover I'm asexual till 2014. And I was in heterosexuals nearly half of my life, I would say. So at 16, which is when I had my first boyfriend in terms of who I felt I loved, And he asked me or rather pressurized me into sex for the first time ever in my life. I didn't have self-love back then. My self-love journey didn't start until 2012, actually. So back then I lacked self-love. So at 16, he pressured me to have sex because he said all his friends were doing it. And that's what he wanted. And I felt that I would lose him if I didn't do that. So I obliged him. But he was very gentle, which I was really appreciative of. Did your mom and dad ever talk to you about sex? No, they felt that school should do that. And the only education, this is really important, actually, the only education I had at school was a video in biology. Mm -hmm. I've I've got to laugh at this. It's not funny because this is the state of the situation. But this was my sex education. There was a woman dressed as an egg and a guy dressed as a sperm. And this is a really old fashioned video, VHS yeah. tape. And they were the the they were swimming towards each other. And the woman was singing, one day my sperm will come. No way. <laughs> one day my sperm will come. Are that was serious? my sex. Ed- yeah, I'm being serious because I sticks in my mind. That was my sex education at school, a it's biology totally lesson. Yeah. And that was it. So I didn't have any sex education at school apart from that. And yeah, I wasn't interested in sex. Like, even though I had it, even at 16, he pressurized me into it. I would rather have not bothered. Um, But, you know, I did it to keep the relationship, I guess. And because I, I didn't know any different. I just thought that's what you normally do in a relationship. That's what guy wants. So I had to do that. And reason like one of the major reasons why I wrote asexual guide to sex is because I wish I'd had that book the book I'm writing at 16 years old Mm -hmm. and some people are like well it's so big why don't you split it up and I am thinking about actually because there's asexual sex stories in the book I'm thinking about maybe doing a smaller book with the stories same stories in it Mm -hmm. so just for people who don't want the whole guide to sex I'm thinking but I don't know if Amazon would allow that but the reason I've done it the way I've done it is because I want all the safety aspects and the consent in there and assertiveness and boundaries which is what I didn't know when I was a kid 
well and when I was 16 you know I didn't know all this so I want to save people pain and heartache I want to help prevent sexual abuse situations and so that is why I'm making this comprehensive like reference book that can sit by a person's bedside for life and they can pick it up and refer to it and it's like all the stuff I've been learning over the years about relationships dating healthy relationships attachment styles avoidant attachment you know anxious attachment it's I haven't put everything in there about all these attachment styles because it is an asexual guide to sex and it would just go on forever I could go on forever yeah, with it all of those things are very important for anybody you know boundaries yeah and- yeah so I want people who whatever sexuality they are to buy the asexual guide to sex like virgins mm-hmm. people are inexperienced uh, their education was missing like mine because even though I'm asexual I've had sex so I I feel I'm really best placed for my mission so I haven't really revealed my mission yet but my mission is to get asexuality recognized as mm-hmm. a sexual orientation in its own right throughout the globe so that no asexual has to live in fear of ridicule ever again Mm -hmm. so it's a spiritual mission actually which obviously is very relevant to your podcast and so I believe I was given this mission by God and the universe and I'm the one that selected specifically to get it recognized in its own right Mm -hmm. so most people who know asexuality are in the LGBT plus community okay. because LGBT plus QIA, the A stands for asexual. Some people say it stands for agender, androgynous, aromantic. Some people pronounce that aromantic and some people think it's allies, but it's quite well known for asexuality. Mm-hmm. And that's all very good and well because there's a lot of people who are asexual that feel left out in the bigger wider world because we don't experience sexual attraction in the main it's a lack of sexual attraction but there's a spectrum from pure asexuals to gray asexuals which i haven't gone into yet but basically it's based on a lack of sexual attraction whereas lesbians gays bisexuals are still experiencing sexual attraction the normal sexual attraction unless they're an asexual who identifies as gay bisexual as well but in the main lesbians gays bisexuals they all experience sexual attraction whereas asexuality is based on a lack of sexual attraction so it's kind of different in that respect and Mm. it's my personal mission to get it recognized in its own right I'm not taken away from LGBT community you know because asexuality is part of the acronym whatever my thoughts feelings or other people are about it Mm. but it's my mission to get it recognized individually because it is very different because it is based on lack of sexual attraction there are genuine people out there who don't have any need like want or urge for sex whatsoever which mm-hmm. would be the the asexuals usually who are the pure asexuals and there are gray asexuals that do have sex there are gray asexuals that are sex positive there are asexuals in general that you know they can they can't choose whether they're asexual or not but they can choose to have sex or not and there's quite a lot of sex repulsed asexuals out there so some are having sex some aren't having sex so it's a myth that not every asexual is the same no people think that every asexual doesn't have sex or you know they don't want a relationship which isn't true so there's a lot of myths and stereotypes out there but my mission to get it recognized individually is because i want to stop as many sexual abuse situations as possible and prevent as many as possible by getting it recognized that there are people out there that genuinely don't want like or need sex and it's okay to feel that way and the more heterosexuals accept this on dating apps and dating sites and who know about it the more they can stop putting Mm -hmm. on people is natural for everyone everyone likes sex and the expectation of sex on dates and in a relationship all the time it needs to stop people should be asking like what sexual orientation are you do you know what i mean we there should be a lot more open honest discussion i just feel it's important for me to get it recognized individually and that's my mission spiritually aside from you know sex a relationship also is important like oxytocin we need oxytocin to survive and that oxytocin is relationship that's love that's kissing but it's also just doing what you and I are doing right now talking and having conversations and just being with other people so I'm guessing this is part of the reason why you speak out is because you still want to be in community be in relationships so some asexuals they don't ever want a relationship they want friend yeah not a romantic relationship some asexuals don't experience romantic attraction or sexual attraction some asexuals they prefer 
having a friendship to having a romantic relationship some have queer platonic relationships and some they just literally have their friends are everything to them and they have deep friendships i'm in terms of asexuality there's more people that aren't romantic than romantic so i'm a romantic asexual there's less people available for me i'm only interested in guys so there's less guys usually that are asexual and there's less romantics among asexuals Mm -hmm. so for me to try and find a guy who's romantic who likes kissing a lot because a lot of asexuals don't like much kissing it's kind of hard and I found out in 2014 I found out I was asexual so my last long-term relationship was 2011 so I've got to skip now if I skip to 2011 I did have good sex with him So people are shocked. They're like, you're asexual because you've had bad sex. I'm like, no. And I had a good sexual experience with him. I'd rather have not have bothered. I'd rather not have it. But and I didn't think I really want sex with you now. But he liked that. I've never had an orgasm in my life. I don't really understand what that is. And I was paranoid about getting pregnant because I've never wanted children since I was 15 years old. I knew I never wanted kids. And I used to be getting pregnancy test kits just to check I wasn't pregnant. I was on a birth control pill, but he used to like to do it naturally. And so I had irritable bowel syndrome. And I, I've got, I have actually got generalized anxiety disorder, which is a condition as well. And so I used to get worried about being pregnant. So, yeah, I found out as asexual, I think it's important to say this because in 2013, so I split up with my long term ex in 2014, took me 18 months to two years to fully get over it. In that time, I reprogrammed my mind to be happy being single using neuro linguistic programming when I did a life coaching course with the coaching academy in the UK. I've also reprogrammed my mind to be like 21 years old using NLP as well. So that's like the mindset and life I live and well, teenager life, actually. So I'm not interested in my birth to age at all. And I actually like younger foreign guys in their early to mid 20s, particularly (laughs) in Indian. So I like coloured skin. I think it's gorgeous and beautiful. And that's actually Indians are my type, but it's very difficult because they want marriage usually at least. So 2011, split up, took a year forced myself to be single because I was dependent I was codependent back then I was dependent on a guy I'd always been in relationships the majority of my life but it wasn't until nearly a year later I started actually having a first date if you know what I mean and then in 2013 I was in a relationship with a Bangladeshi guy 23 years old really hot aesthetically so some asexuals don't use this terminology but I found him aesthetically hot really super attractive and we were kissing <laughs> kissing on my bed um but then I he wanted to have sex and I just couldn't bring myself to do it my mind my being my soul just wouldn't allow it and that's when I realized I was different and I just couldn't however however much I found him aesthetically attractive um even if my body pounds because I do experience arousal but no sexual attraction because they're two different things but I didn't realize that at the time And then within three weeks, he cheated on me. So that was the end of that relationship. And then after that, I need to fast forward to 2014 because that's when I discovered I'm asexual. And I went to see a counsellor and I NHS counsellor in the UK. So professional counsellor. And I told her that I can't bring myself to have sex anymore. Mm -hmm. That the expectation of the sex at the end of the night when I'm dating is making me almost want to wet myself because I'm so anxious about it. And I love kissing and romance, but I don't like sex. And I'm worried about it because I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm going to be alone forever, basically. Mm. And she said, absolutely, the worst thing that I could have possibly been told. So she said that I'm going to have to have sex in order to keep a good guy. And I was absolutely horrified. Like I went home after that and Googled, I love kissing, but not sex. And that's how I discovered I'm asexual. Because I thought no one should be told they have to have sex in order to keep a good guy. That's like a license to rape me because it's something I don't want to do and I don't like it. And it's basically saying you cannot get love and you cannot have a relationship unless you have sex. And it was awful. And I went back to her and told her, I think I'm asexual. And she wouldn't look it up. She said, oh, the, the NHS computers won't let us look up such a thing. And I said, well, you could have looked it up at home. And she just didn't want to know. She wasn't interested. And so basically... The last session I had with her, I was really in floods of tears. 
I, I it was a shock you know like I'm something different to what I thought I was for years because I thought I was heterosexual and I felt like I needed some help and guidance but she clearly wasn't the person to give it to me and then that's went more into asexuality.org because that's how I found the biggest online community for asexuals when I googled I love kissing but not sex and discovered there are people like me who want a romantic relationship without sex Wow. And so that was in 2014. By 2015, January 2015, I was started my asexual meetups. And then October 2015, I started doing my asexual channel and I couldn't talk about sex back then. Mm. I was so shy. I used to be a shy, quiet girl at school, actually, introverted. And I couldn't talk about sex at all. I was so shy. I was so reserved. And in 2012, I couldn't even be on social media. Like I was so panicky about being social media, but I knew if I wanted to make my mark in the world, I'd have to be on social media. And then in, in 2015, I'm like, you're going to have to talk about sex, Daniel, because it's going to crop up with asexuals. And I was shy. I would only talk about it with a boyfriend, not my parents, not even a best girl, friend or anyone. And then I'm thinking, you can't take it to the grave with you. Like if you take it to the grave with you, it's going to help no one, this information. So you need to come out, break through your anxiety barriers and break through your asexual barriers. Hey listeners, did you know that Sense of Soul has a network of lightworkers affiliates program? Now you get to work with one of our inspiring guests. And I'd like to introduce you to one of our affiliates, Medicine Woman, Carrie Hummingbird. Carrie has put together an exclusive package for Sense of Soul listeners. You can take Carrie's mini course, Sacred Living with the Four Directions, and also get a 30-minute shamanic healing, full cleanse of heavy energy, and fill up your tank with high vibrational light. An amazing opportunity at a great price. You definitely want to take advantage of her amazing offer. You can go to www.senseofsoulpodcast.com and look under the network of lightworkers, or you can find this link directly to Carrie's amazing offer in the show notes. My goodness. Like you found other people that were like, yeah, I'm like that too. And then you knew there was probably other people out there that felt the same and you've reached out to them. You've wrote a book for them. You've created a community for them and this meetup group. So how successful have you been with actually connecting with other people? Right. This is very interesting. So on my channel, I cover asexual life, love, dating, relationships, friendship. And like I said, since 2018, it's like a reality TV show. So all the viewers come on my journey with me, the ups and the downs. I've had over 600,000 views on my channel. So over half a million and growing. And I run six asexual groups on Facebook three asexual Facebook pages. I've got asexualized.com is my website. And yeah, so I'm on. I, currently I'm on Facebook dating and I'm on Badoo. Now Badoo.com has got a category for asexuals. Wow. So it's good, but you can't filter looking for asexual. So you can say you're asexual in sexual orientation, but when it comes up with the filters, they've got like bisexual, gay, lesbian, open-minded, heterosexual, but they haven't got asexual. And I'm like, that's disappointing. So far I've only come across seven guys who are on the asexual spectrum there and none of them are suitable for me facebook dating i haven't come across one genuine asexual guy that i know of yet some of them lie unfortunately so i've been looking for my indian soulmate since 2014 <laughs> i'm like where is he you mentioned a gray asexual oh yes i need to explain that thank you so the asexuality is a sexual orientation that's a lack of sexual attraction but it's also a spectrum of identities within the asexuality spectrum umbrella. Okay. So I'm going to try and simplify this as much as possible. So if we simplify it into two categories of asexual, the pure asexuals and the gray asexuals, mm -hmm. the pure asexuals don't experience any sexual attraction whatsoever, meaning they don't look at someone and get the need, urge or want for partnered sexual intercourse. They don't look at someone and think, I want sex with you. So it's it's complete lack of sexual attraction. The grey asexuals, on the other hand, which is its own spectrum under the asexual spectrum, and some people who are under the grey asexual spectrum choose to identify as asexual because it is on the asexuality spectrum, but some of them don't. But grey asexuality is part of the sexual end of the asexual spectrum before sexual spectrum begins. And so grey asexuals do experience sexual attraction 
but only under limited, rare or specific circumstances, or they experience it, but not enough to want to act on it. And amongst those are also the demisexuals. The demisexuals cannot experience any sexual attraction unless and until a deep emotional bond has been formed and usually maintained and reciprocated. It doesn't mean to say everyone they have an emotional bond with, they're going to experience that sexual attraction with, but it can happen for them. But until then, they feel like they don't experience any sexual attraction. And then under those two categories, you've got loads of different subcategories of asexuals. So it, it it gets to be a bit of a minefield and there's new cat there's new subcategories and identities coming up, but there's two main categories if you like and sub identities within those. We're also different, so it's really hard to put everybody just under one. You know, there's so many things that are on a spectrum. You know, I have to say I just recently or I am taking um, a course and it does have to do with sexual energy. And actually it doesn't really have to do necessarily with another person. That's but it's, yeah, it's just about the spiritual power behind sexual energy, which is the energy of creation that is more powerful than any other energy we experience. Yeah, I've heard about that. I don't feel I have sexual energy, though, myself. I don't feel that way. I feel I can be creative and do amazing things without sexual energy. I mean, I do know of it. I'm aware of it, but I don't necessarily agree experience. with it. Some people believe you can only do certain things if you've got sexual energy. As an asexual who feels I don't have sexual energy myself, I think that's very limiting beliefs. I think the ideology that you can only do certain things if you have sexual energy is very limiting beliefs. It's basically saying if you don't have sexual energy, you can't do things. No, I don't think it's that, though, necessarily. I mean, I mean, I definitely am my first three children and there wasn't a lot of sexual energy going on in there. It was just breathing. (laughs) So I'm here to tell you, you can't even create, you know, lives without having, you know, massive buildup of energy. And maybe I'll even send you some information. You can look into it and and maybe you can even do a, an episode on it. I don't know. For one, you know, we haven't had parents, you know, our generation anyways, having had parents who sat down and talked to us about it. They're definitely not going to tell you that in school, you know, what to feel or what you might not feel or what you should do. If somebody pressures you, you know, there's a lot of that, but women have for generations and generations. I mean, well, I, since the beginning of time, I mean, it was all about, you know, could you provide a son, right. For our lineage to con- continue on. You were really kind of like, Yes, and if you didn't breed um, a boy or whatever or children I mean they would put you away that's crazy but now women today we have more choice we're demanding respect gone are the days of you just taking my body without my permission right and we're speaking up and we can talk about sex openly I mean that's not something people did before yeah yeah you know like I was on an antidepressant for like seven years You know, and during that time, I had a hard time having sex. I had a hard time getting into it. I didn't, I could have just decided not to have sex for the rest of my life. I mean, I just had no pleasure. I didn't desire that whatsoever. And I also was a mom and busy, you know, and, and just had interest in other things. And I think that when I got off the medicine, you know, things changed, you know, my chemicals in my body changed a little bit and I kind of aligned back up with that sexual energy but now I'm going towards 50 I'm 47. And now that way. Yeah. And you know, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't, which is one of the reasons why I was curious and kind of taking that course where maybe I could control my own sexual energy, kind of create it more. And so it's one of the reasons why I was interested in taking that course. I think also men go through it too. As they get older, they get more estrogen. We get more testosterone. It's like, what is happening here? (laughs) And, you know, I just feel like there's some hormonal changes going on with me as I age. And so that's becoming less of a priority. All right. This is really interesting because since I found out I'm asexual, I understand myself a lot better. So I understand I have kissing knees now. I understand that I have arousal where kissing is concerned, but it doesn't have to have anyone involved with it. I can just think about it for myself. Yeah. I found the guys on, on dating sites, doesn't matter the age, they are still really horny, <laughs> including guys who are older. I don't, I'm not really interested in guys who are older. Right. I, ca- I occasionally change my filters for guys who I wouldn't usually be interested in. And I am in dating groups and non-asexual dating groups, as well as other asexual dating groups on Facebook. I run three dating groups of my own for asexuals. I'm in other asexual dating oh. groups, but I'm also in non-asexual dating groups. And 
I've never taken antidepressants. So I, no. Although I was depressed for a lot of, of, of my years, I never took medication for depression, never taken it for anxiety. I've mm. never had it for fibromyalgia. I'm I'm a natural person. A lot of the time mm. I don't like taking meds. So I have I'm fibromyalgia a- too. Do you, take me- do you take meds? No, for? I know. You know, I did years, like a decade ago, but then I got off of all of them and I started doing stuff like meditation, chanting and other ways to get rid of my pain, which definitely works. Did you know I got this fibromyalgia self-help handbook? Published this in 2019. So this is basically fibromyalgia self-help handbook, which again is on Amazon. How to manage fibromyalgia to have less pain, more energy and feel happier like a superhero rock star. And it's told in a superhero style throughout the book. And there's me on the back cover in my Ace Fibro Girl outfit. I don't even see that. that. So I'm dressed up. Yeah, definitely get it. It's it's honestly like a personal development book in disguise. It tells you how to reduce pain in 25 aspects of your life that you can apply to yourself with or without fibromyalgia. My triggers are stress, period. I mean, the other day, I had the most stressful day. I woke up, lost my keys, found them at like six o'clock, which is late. And then about an hour or so later, my mom lost her keys and she's at the movie theater with my children, can't come home. I'm like, what is the loss of the keys thing? I mean, it was such a stressful day. And that night, my body hurt all night long. I had restless leg syndrome. I only got like, I think it was like 59 solid minutes of sleep because I tracked my sleep. And because of that awareness, you know, I'm able to know that if I continue to ignore all that, I will just go right back into that fibromyalgia. But really, truly, I've learned to control it, you know, through just tools and self-love was a huge one because I was giving out everything to everybody else and never to myself. You know, and when you do that, your body will react and some people are more sensitive than others. And it sounds like you are a very sensitive person, yeah. an empath maybe, because I know oh, I'm an definitely. empath. If someone's talking about like headaches, I get a headache. <laughs> I'm empathetic from the point of view, like if an ambulance goes by, I immediately go, I hope everyone's all right. I don't know who it's for or why, but I'm like, I hope everyone's all right. You know, yeah, I can tell you're like that. You're so yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I want to say something about guinea pigs. So with guinea pigs, I can always tell when something's wrong. I feel them. And it's very difficult because all the guinea pigs I had in the past since leaving home with my parents have all had things wrong with them. And I bought one guinea pig once, a female, and she was pregnant and meant to be a male, but she was pregnant and had three babies. Uh, So, (laughs) Unfortunately, I don't have any guinea pigs anymore. But in the past, my guinea pigs used to be very randy. So I used to think that the sexual energy I lack, it's all in them. I've had two girl guinea pigs, I get it on before, as well as a brother and sister, even though they've had the snip and stuff. And they used to be at it, like trying to hump each other all the time and running around the cage and after each other. So I feel that my guinea pigs used to make up for the sexual energy that I lacked and it was all going on them. And I'm like, I'm asexual, but my guinea pigs definitely aren't. They're the exact opposite of me. So, yeah. Did did you know about my guinea pigs? No. Have you got guinea pigs? I don't have any anymore. Okay. So my daughter, she loves animals more than she does people. I'll be honest. My youngest. And she's like, I want to go and get a a fish. Mom, can I get a fish? And I was like, sure. So we go to the pet store. We're going to get maybe a beta fish, right? I think I'm going to leave, you know, with maybe $30 worth of fish stuff and call it a day. No, we leave with the guinea pig and one guinea pig. The next day, guinea pig is sad. So Kensley tells me, you know, mom, in Switzerland, it's illegal to buy one guinea pig. Yeah, you, you You have to have two. So here we are, we have two guinea pigs and they shit like I've never seen in my life. No animal shits like that. So interesting that you're bringing yeah. My last baby girl, I get really upset talking about it. She died in my arms before Christmas. So yeah, I'm still healing from that. And it was difficult because I had to move home right after she died. I was, oh, well, I, I didn't move home then, but I had to look for somewhere else to live because my ex-landlord now sold the place I've been in for years to his son. 
and I had to quit my full-time job so I used to do the stuff race sexuals on top of like a job but now I just devote my time to that and then I joined Blue Talks in February this year so I'm mm. speaking for Blue Talks in Oxford in October I'm in a new chapter in their book with Ken Honda and so I'm studying obviously more to do with public speaking I'm getting on more podcasts and so I really dedicate even more of my time to asexuality which I did predominantly before but now I can devote more time to it I'm always busy doing stuff <laughs> I'm always like doing channels and stuff and growing them so yeah let me ask you do some asexual people have children or do they desire to have children oh right yeah so I have to say I just don't represent every asexual I'm quite unique but yeah there are some asexuals even in my asexual perspectives book well we were talking about earlier Mm -hmm. and there's some there that have children already so in terms of children some asexuals will have sex just to have children then never have sex again some mm-hmm. asexuals don't mind having sex so they're in relationships having sex they're sex positive sex neutral sex indifferent they're not bothered one way or the other mm-hmm. some like it as an activity to do so some asexuals want kids they want them by normal means having sexual intercourse penetrative vaginal sex basically they're fine doing that some asexuals are some people are asexual and they've had kids already didn't realize they're asexual so they come to the asexual community realizing years later they're asexual, they lack sexual attraction, even though they've got children from past relationships. Often it's past relationships because a lot of the time their relationships have broken down because they found out they're asexual and mm. it stopped working the relationship. And so, so but this is not the case for everyone, but you do find that. And then some asexuals will adopt kids because they don't physically want them. They'll do adoption or fostering. Some asexuals will have IVF some asexuals want kids like kids and they still have the maternal instinct to have kids I've never had that since I was 15 I knew I didn't want kids I knew I didn't even want to adopt but you're obviously very nurturing and caring I mean yes so so yes okay yes so I get on well with kids as little beings in their own right I'm not really into babies although babies feel very safe in my company because I am very protective even of myself and other people my friends so babies will come and hold my little finger for example because they know I'm safe and kids will automatically come up and start holding my hand I've had that since being a kid myself Mm -hmm. like what is your hope in doing this? I mean, I, I, like I was saying earlier, it kind of seemed like your book was also really speaking to everyone about the things that they need to have like boundaries. And yeah. So with my asexual guide to sex book that I'm still editing, doing the final edits for, I've been actually spending the last week soundproofing my home to try and make it better for podcasts, which again is to raise awareness of asexuality, everything to do with asexuality. Basically with my asexual guide to sex book, I see it as a very important book. And my ambition for it is to get on 100 podcasts at least. And I believe that it will enable me to help bridge the gap between asexuals and heterosexuals to help foster more understanding between the different sexualities so that I can help fulfill my mission of getting asexuality taken seriously by heterosexuals and to understand that asexuality is a real thing you know there's genuinely some people who don't like want or need sex and I see me getting on podcasts to do with to do with dating relationships uh sex podcasts asexual podcasts and on youtube shows and stuff like that so i see it my mission as well is to try and get it into bookstores physical bookstores which is very difficult to do i know but i'm going to try to do that um i'm a registered publisher in the uk anyway in 2017 i fulfilled that dream of being a registered publisher uh with quirky books it's my own publishing imprint i use but I want to get it out to more libraries. I want to get it into more people's hands. I mean, ideally, I'd like to get it into counsellors' hands, therapists, and I would like to get it spread as much as possible. I've done the Asexual Guide to Sex specifically on purpose to cater kind of for the asexual market, which obviously is predominantly aimed at, but also the sexual market to help those people who are virgins, who are not experiencing sex, or who are missing the education and you know need this advice help you know it can help anyone careful I just I'm just so ambitious about it you know it's even hard for some and most heterosexuals to talk about sex so you kind of are opening that up too and yeah like that because you're just like it's okay to talk about this stuff and sharing your story I mean I used to think that vulnerability was a like oh god you know don't share you know your weaknesses and your and your stuff but I see that it's really what connects everybody collectively. 
yeah that's a really good point actually because when I'm on my asexual channel I do share my life journey so I do talk about my dates and stuff yeah, I love and... your show oh yeah you were yes. on my, in my chat thank you yes, so much I loved your channel it is great and I think it's so important to be real and real. authentic yes and beautiful. you know like a couple of days later I will literally say how I'm getting through this difficult emotional time what I'm doing how I'm thinking how I'm I'm using my mindset to get over it and get through it so asexuals on my channel can always see asexuality on a daily basis in real life yeah. context and how to over overcome those daily challenges including when a date doesn't go the way you want it to when you feel something for someone it's not reciprocated or it just can't happen and yeah. they can go through that pain with me but I can also inspire them this is how I got over it a couple of days later I'm here again right I'm bouncing back I'm going out again I'm self-loving self-dating taking care of myself grieving which is healthy and so we should be expressing our emotions we yeah. shouldn't be afraid to cry in public we should be mm. open about that because repressing it's and real. suppressing emotions is what causes things like fibromyalgia as you probably know and, and did you know that tears from sadness actually have toxins they are toxic and the tears from happiness do not have toxins oh i didn't know that so it's your body's way of literally trying to cleanse itself by releasing but tell everybody where they can find your book where they can find you um do you have a website yes it's asexualized.com is my website that's spelled a s e x u a l i s e dot com i also have the version with the z in it as well because mm -hmm. uh, asexualized can be spelled two different ways asexualized my asexual life is my channel i've got pages on facebook as well i also started an asexualized dating channel recently please check that out so it's asexualized my asexual life is for my main channel that's had over six hundred thousand views i talk about love life dating relationships from an asexual point of view and it's like a personal development daily blog vlog whatever you want to call it it's a bit of everything so i do asexual entertainment lifestyle uh, education information on my main asexualized my asexual life channel so it shows asexuality in real life context which i love i think it's so important to have that rather than just questions and answers about asexuality it's like how do i cope in real life so that's my main channel which you de definitely subscribe to that and asexualized dating it's asexualized dating as a handle uh on 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 youtube but it's also called no bs dating relationship <laughs> advice so that is how i want to be known like i'm telling it like it is no bullshit basically because i'm sick and tired of people bullshitting and playing games i'm like no because i can sense um i'm very good at being able to spot abusers and narcissists online now especially on dating so that potentially is uh, gonna expand more like i'm maybe i don't know if i'm gonna do more books or courses for for that particular part mm -hmm. of dating and relationships in the future but that's something i specialize in quite a lot i've learned over the years a lot to do with manipulation narcissistic abuse and all that type of thing i'm very clued up on it nowadays so i do have videos on my asexualized my asexual life channel like that but i'm very good at spotting them on dating sites so it's very important because i think we're only going to get more and more online so more and more dating is yeah. going to happen so it's really important mm -hmm. so i i've only just started on the 2nd of july uh 2023 um and so yeah in the first month i've had over eight thousand views already so 25 subscribers for me i think that's good because the stats are healthy um yeah and i'm also at make money make cash.com and make money make cash youtube channel Okay. I'm known as the asexual entrepreneur there. So everything there I do go. is geared towards asexuality. So yeah, my book. So I got two books out. Well, two main books. I have five, but these are the main important ones to me because these are ones that change lives. So this is my other ones are kind of more technical books. Oh, I've written a book about redundancy as well, but these are my two <laughs> top ones. So this one is Asexual Perspectives, 47 Asexual Stories, Love, Life and Sex, mm. A Celebration of Asexual Diversity. But if you type in Asexual Perspectives, it usually comes up. Um, mm. It's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Waterstones, Blackwells, Walmart websites, and can be ordered from any good bookshop. Awesome. So you can walk in and all that. And then uh, Fibromyalgia Self-Help Handbook. How to manage fibromyalgia to have less pain, more energy, feel happier, like a superhero rock star. It's Love really it. good. 
I mentioned asexuality in here as well. <laughs> so this is available on Amazon. It's available Barnes and Noble, Blackwells, and Walmart. Okay, so cool. and you can order it from good bookshops as well. So yeah, and see me in my ace fiber got ace. By the way, is a slang or nickname for asexual. In case you didn't know that. Okay. So thank you so much. Yes. Whatever this energy is, sexual or not, it's amazing. So thank you so much for what you're doing and and for just being you and putting it out there. Thank you, Shama. It's been really amazing experience talking to you. I yeah. loved it. You were a nice interviewer as well. You're really Aww. good. It was super fun. You're really being in my space. Oh, I love being in your space. You, you've yeah. got a lovely personality and you've got a gorgeous voice, got like a velvety voice. <laughs> Well, thanks, Sandra. Thank you so much. Sending you lots of love. Thanks for listening to Sense of Soul podcast. And thanks to our special guests for joining me. If you want more of Sense of Soul, check out my website at www.mysenseofsoul.com where you can work with me one-on-one or help support Sense of Soul podcast by donating to my coffee fund. Thanks for listening.